Hikaru Nakamura takes on Nijata Basov in this all-important clash. Hikaru lost his last game to Vidit Gujarati and that has put him in quite a difficult situation in this tournament because now he is on 4.5 out of 9 and winning this game would give him good chances. There's Nijata Basov. He's the last seed of the tournament but he has been playing pretty well, not giving away easy points to his opponents, fighting till the end. And for Hikaru, it's not going to be an easy round to win. But if he manages to win this, he will move closer to the leaders and will have a chance to win this candidates. They shake hands and off we go. What is Hikaru's first move going to be? He opens with 1e4. And Nijat has showed that Petrov is the line that he wants to play against e4, which is super solid and that he doesn't fall into much problems. So knight comes out to f3 and will he play knight f6? Yes, he does. It's the Petrov on the board and this is going to be an interesting one. What is Hikaru's choice going to be? He played an extremely theoretical line against Yan Nepomnishi uh, and that one was... That one ended in a draw after a massive fight. Let's see uh, what happens here. He brings back his knight to f3. And now Nijat captures the pawn in the center. Uh, you should know that if you play queen e2, there is queen e7 to break the pin. So d3 is played to push the knight away. And now the knight comes back to f6. And Hikaru pushes his pawn in the center. And I believe Nijat will also do the same. So we have uh, an exchange French here, which is interesting. I mean, uh, it's very, very equalish. You can say even a bit dull or dry. But Nijat decides to make it interesting. He doesn't go to repeat the position with Bishop D6, like copy it. But he goes C5 and Hikaru plays C3. With this move, he's actually making a square for the bishop on c2 in the same line was i think played by nijat in this tournament before and there it was castles that was played now with c3 c4 bishop c2 is played this is very provocative by the way to put your pawns like this because with this you have uh, simply removed the pressure that is there on the center and you have made it very very um, easy for your opponent to play but Nijat says that I have more space on the queen side and Hikaru how are you going to take advantage of the fact that I have given up the tension for now Hikaru just plays h3 preventing bishop g4 pin in the position uh, Nijat can continue with his development which he does with knight to c6 so Essentially, black has more space, but white has this beautiful bishop on this diagonal. Also, this bishop is looking here. Hikaru pins this knight. It's quite an irritating pin, but I think Nijat is fine with it. He will just kick the bishop away with h6. And I think uh, he's just thinking about his moves here. Uh, the, yes, he plays h6. Now... Of course, if you take here queen f6, black has absolutely no problems out of the opening. So to maintain the pin is important with bishop h4. And Hikaru is going to do that. At some point, white can even strike with b3. And that can be an important move. And also this bishop for Nijat. Where do you develop it? Do you put it on e6? Do you put it? This is there's not possibility of putting it on f5 b5 is played and this is not a great move because now I think there were better moves here like rook e8 maybe g5 possible but after b5 played Hikaru plays this very nice move rook e1 he's now controlling the e5 square and he wants to put his knight on e5 and that will create more pressure on black's position. So for Nijat now. How does he continue the play? Maybe he just continues with a5 and b4. That could be his idea here. He plays a5. That's a good move. He wants to play b4 in the position, creating play on the queen side. And for Hikaru, the there, there are two ways. One is to develop the knight on d2. 
the other is to play, put your knight on e5 uh, and knight e5 does look like a very very interesting move to to continue the game with hikaru is just thinking about his move here uh, and the the thing is after knight e5 yes he plays it it's not so simple to to touch this piece because if you take that's just you lose a piece uh, you can play bishop b7 here but then there is knight g4 which creates a massive massive threat here so that's the reason why nijat goes rook a6 and with this he if you go knight g4 he will take this with the bishop now hikaru finishes his development he puts his knight on d2 the knight can come to f3 in future so white is creating some some big threats here uh, i mean not big threats but just putting the pressure you know if the queen comes on f3 it will put pressure on f6 as well as d5 pawn so nijat goes bishop c7 a very very key move because he wants to put his queen on d6 that's what i feel breaking the pin and now ooh, queen comes out to f3 so pressure here pressure on d5 and how does black continue now well i really like nijat's moon knight e7 because uh, here if you take the rook swings over this rook defends on f6 that's so tricky hikaru goes b3 and fantastic chess by both players with b3 he's opening up the b file here it's a non standard position so there's a lot to think about a4 played by nijat and i think the reason why a4 is played so that hikaru himself can't play a4 and break down the queen side so a4 by black and now i think hikaru will take on a4 or c4 and then capture the b file for his other rook which is on a1 i think for a player like hikaru uh, who's facing the petrov with the white pieces this definitely seems like a great position that he's got because generally uh, he wants a fight against nijat you know he doesn't want to play something theoretical which nijat is well prepared and this has happened his opponent is down to 1 hour 22 minutes it's a fresh position and that's the best that hikaru can ask for from any opening that he would play and now he goes knight f1 and this knight is actually a very very powerful piece it can come to e3 putting more pressure on d5 f5 g3 it can also go this way so very strong knight a3 played here by nijat and now maybe just rook b1 taking control of the b file that's exactly what hikaru does he puts his rook on the open file and nijat now plays a move holds the rook for a long time in his hand but switches over to the e6 square i do feel that knight coming to e3 is a very strong idea here because it might seem that you are losing a pawn but then you can spoil his structure with bishop f6 so definitely possible but hikaru instead of going knight e3 goes knight to g4 i'm a, i'm a little bit unsure of this move because in a way uh, you are trading it down which i think nijat would be happy to do knight takes g4 okay it's also possible to put your knight on e4 perhaps but uh, that might be a little complicated he takes on g4 and he tells hikaru how are you recapturing hikaru has to take back on g4 with the pawn and that's what he does h takes g4 is on the board and nijat abasov now has to think about his pieces here the bishop on c8 the knight on e7 and uh, how does he continue the game He's taking his time you can see he makes the move queen e8 gets up from the chair and hikaru nakamura is actually hikaru uh, in this game has been getting up from his chair so many times like after every move that he plays he gets up uh, and i think there's a refreshment room right behind this 
area and the players go there very often so bishop g3 played you can actually trade the bishops perhaps like if you take here the only problem is that after knight g3 or even queen g3 white gets a nice position with his remaining pieces and so nijat plays his bishop to a5 and he's putting pressure on the c3 pawn but here after take take and the rook entering on b8 it does seem like there can he takes he takes by the way hikaru has taken on e6 and i think nijat will take back with the bishop taking with the pawn only creates further weakness in the position so bishop takes e6 sounds very logical yes bishop takes on e6 and now with this bishop looking here and the rook looking here does seem like there can be some tactical ideas also you can move your rook to b7 not to b8 so hikaru has to decide what his next move will be he has 43 minutes on the clock abaso has 48 minutes we are on move number 26 now 25 moves have been completed 15 more moves to make Hikaru goes on the 7th heaven he puts his rook on b7 <coughs> and now for Nijat it's a question of coordinating his pieces first get the knight out then get the queen out then get the rook out and I think in that order you want to continue knight c8 is played here and now white has a very powerful move here Hikaru which is g5 and after you take I go queen h5 and just threatening a mate here if you play g6 i'll take it if you play f5 i can take and go bishop e5 this is very powerful so actually for hikaru g5 is very strong and he should be able to find it but instead he plays bishop f4 i think the lack of time with just 19 minutes left is playing on hikaru's mind because you know 13 moves to make in 19 minutes without any increment it's very stressful it's not like your 30 second increment that you are thinking and then you will say oh for the last 10 moves I will play on 30 seconds. It's like you have you physically not be able to make it if you don't have time. So queen comes up and Nijat is fighting back here. He's brought his queen in. He's attacking Hikaru's rook. The rook has to decide where to go. And Nijat has 37 minutes. So clearly the pressure is getting to Hikaru. He goes rook b8 where his position was very good uh, but now it's no longer that great plus he's low on time and let's see how nijat plays he first plays his knight to e7 offering a trade of rooks and i think for hikaru with every trade he would definitely worry that the game would end in a draw like if this game he ends in a draw and doesn't win his chances of winning the candidates become very less <laughs> He needs to win this game. So rook goes back to b1. I'm very interested to see how Nijat continues now. There are a few options he has. One is to put his knight on g6. But I think his move is fantastic. Queen d7. Attacking the pawn on g4. I guess knight can defend it. But that's a little passive. And Hikaru can even push the pawn. I think that's what, that's what he wants to do push the pawn to g5 thinking a, a bit seriously here and yes he pushes his pawn to g5 so now he's hit the king side and nijat plays this fine move bishop g4 and the point of this is that when the queen moves away he will push his pawn and then his king side will still remain very much compact and intact queen g3 and h5 seems like a strong move here nijat taking his time plays h5 so 11 minutes for hikaru to complete nine more moves nijat has 25 minutes the position is equal maybe even slightly preferable for black so big big pressure there for hikaru nakamura he plays queen e3 well, some of the moves that Hikaru is playing here is just 
without too many ideas he's just wanting to reach move 40 now i feel but nijat has a strong move now he goes knight g6 what a nice move you are attacking this bishop if you take here fg6 the rook opens up so you don't want that to happen and hikaru now waiting to move the bishop away he plays it to h2 but think about it now rook can come to e8 hit the queen and this queen has a very important role to play which is to defend the pawn on c3 hikaru instantly plays his queen back to d2 34 m moves completed seven minutes left hikaru now not getting up from his chair because every second has its worth in gold here and rook swings in rookie two black's position is becoming better and better hikaru quickly gives a check moves to move number 35 has seven minutes 24 seconds in hand king at seven queen c1 played setting up a small trap if you take here bishop g6 check and you lose the bishop so that's the reason why that has to be carefully navigated and now queen e7 a big mistake if bishop c7 was played here black is better but queen e7 why is this a mistake let's try to think has nijat found something has he, will hikaru find with just seven minutes left i think he's rightly investing his time here he has to make four more moves bishop e5 what a beautiful move and the point is very simple you go knight e3 next oh, sorry knight g3 and trap this rook and win it that's the entire point of it and this bishop cannot be taken because the knight is pinned unbelievable turnaround here for hikaru you can see him very confidently sitting there queen e6 but now just knight there's also knight g3 knight e3 by the way to block this completely instead he goes knight g3 which is also a fine move nija tabasov with one careless move just allowing the bishop to settle down here and trap the rook there has lost material and hikaru was so sharp and quick to find it it didn't take him even more than a few seconds to play it but still the game goes on he got a bishop and pawn for the rook abasov c3 pawn is weak let's see how hikaru converts this he's on move 39 final move before time control is played rook b5 and now with 30 minutes added on the clock it is very clear that hikaru has everything under control i mean the game is still not completely winning but it is in hikaru's favor bishop takes c3 pawn is taken and now he's taking his time which is such a good feeling that you have 30 more minutes now but also many times mistakes do occur on move 41 because you tend to relax a bit during this period so queen e3 is played to trade the queens so hikaru gets up from the chair queen takes e3 played and now f takes e3 it's actually useful to uh, sort of break this structure up because now this pawn is no longer like a two passers it's only one pawn tries to stop it a bit so d4 played here and now the the big big issue that black will face which has to be addressed here because materially black is doing fine you know it's not such a big problem and also with uh, these trades black's position keeps looking that it's getting better the big issue is that this a3 pawn will fall and this a pawn will be a passer so for nijat to put the bishop here on b2 defending this might be a very good idea like put the bishop here put the pawn maybe there and keep playing but he goes h4 and this aggressive approach may not really help him 
the the reason for that is that let's say now hikaru goes knight f5 which he will play oh he goes knight e2 back he doesn't move forward here he goes knight e2 the bishop is attacked by the knight and it goes to e3 attacking g5 pawn perhaps rook a5 played and this is where nijat has to remain careful because he's losing the most important pawn in the position the reason why that pawn is so important is because once it's taken the a pawn will just be a passer and hikaru just snatches it and i think this is where nijat uh, is is lost now he is going to be in big trouble rook takes a3 yes he gets this pawn but when you are playing a uh, exchange down position like if you if you are the side with the rook your only thing that you are trying for is to create passers that is exactly what you want hikaru by the way looking at the ceiling calculating rook check comes in and now it's pretty straightforward here after the king moves the a pawn just rolls down the board there's not even anything that black can do it's like such a one sided position he plays knight f8 to block and hikaru pushes the pawn to a4 so after a very very staunch defense throughout the game and in fact some great play even to rest over the initiative nijat avaso has finally collapsed here and you can see him making his move with his left hand that's also some kind of a sign that you know i i no longer believe in my position and now i think just push the pawn even further but hikaru goes knight d4 i think hikaru is doing it even in a uh, bigger style he maybe wants to take this check and then pick up this bishop nijat pushes h3 you take it because you don't want this h2 business for the pawn to become a queen king takes so bishop takes king e, king f2 another check and the king continues to move up Yes, King F3, and now if there's another check, then King F4, King can go up. Like two bishops cannot checkmate this king, and if the knight was playing, it would have been nice, but it's pinned here. That's the problem. So King, oh he goes King G2. I I guess King F4 was not a bad idea just to move forward, but King G2 is safe. There is no more. There are no more checks. F4 check. Uh, f4 pushed forward and it's a nice move because it stops knight e6 the bishop controls it also you might have ideas of f3 but bishop f5 played f3 check well actually taking this is not so silly right because after take here take but then the problem is check and you lose the rook ooh that's really bad so have to be careful he goes king f1 bishop takes bishop knight takes and after bishop g5 well yes this pawn can move forward but my knight can come and stop it instantly and after a5 played so the king stops f pawn knight will stop c pawn the a pawn is going down the board nijat abasov extends his hand in resignation hikaru nakamura gets the job done and you can see he is quite exhausted there he knows he this game will prove to be a critical one in his uh, journey to winning the candidates and that is actually a big big thing look at nijat abasov he's so upset there he actually fought so hard and that's why chess is so brutal because you know you can play like majority of the game well but then one mistake and you lose and this is actually soul crushing for nijat as he has not won a single game and he has had a series of draws but a fighter that he is and also hikaru is now at 5 and 1/2 just half a point behind gukesh and nepo who are the leaders the candidates 2024 continues to get more and more exciting